You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I'm here, and it's a naughty, naughty Christmas. Yeah, I don't even think I'm going to get a lump of coal. (laughs) I have been a naughty girl. Y'all are listening to Grammy's Rocketeer here on RealLibertyMedia.com channel 3 or on the RLM Radio.xyz site or the RLM Spreaker channel or lots of other RLM and num and num places. And yeah, it is the Freaker Friday before Christmas and woo-ha, we going to be naughty. Maybe lo- naughty long time. <laughs> Yeah, it was kind of a long song. <laughs> oh, because I was really enjoying being naughty long time. <laughs> naughty, naughty Christmas. Yeah, that was from Danger, 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 Will Robinson. Danger, Danger, Danger. Yeah, anybody remember that? I think y'all remember that one. Okay, so let me see. Where all have I been this evening? Um. Oh, hey, David Standing Oak over here on Fakie Book. Just shared a little thing from the New York Times. It said federal ban on making lethal viruses has been lifted. Well, isn't that special? Not. Well, it's special in a special kind of way, don't you know? Um, over here on Twitter, thank you ever so much, Barman, for tweeting me out. And Grimner, I truly do appreciate it, you guys. You guys are the gift that keeps on giving, let me tell you. See, I can't say I'd, I don't get nothing for Christmas, because I, I know some really awesome people that I get to share my world with. And so it's like, booyah, bonus round. So, hey there, everybody over here on Twitterville. I hope you're having an absolutely splendiferous, freaktastic Friday before Christmas. I hope you're done with all your shopping. Did you max out your credit cards? I did not. So, you know, you can do that for me. Thank you. Not on my cards, though. <laughs> do your own. Do your own. Um, I lost a stalker over on fake on uh, Twitter. And, you know, I haven't really been getting my messages from Twitter. And I got a message the other day, and it was someone to let me know, basically, that he ships pot anywhere. <laughs> it's like, oh, great. The only messages I get are from people telling me, I mail stuff. <laughs> really? Wow. I can just, oh, yeah, my grandchildren would be proud, wouldn't they? In any case, um, so I noticed I had these messages, and then I started scrolling down. It was like, holy crap, and only I apparently did a Twitter faux pas. Because when someone follows you, you're supposed to send them a message saying, thank you for following me. Well, I didn't do that (laughs) with anyone. (laughs) I just follow them back and I keep losing them I have a lot that I'm following but I keep losing ones that are following me I must be really very scary it's a thing it comes natural hon and I will tell you about that here in just a little bit but thank you for anyone that's over on Twitter and listening in (laughs) I hope you're having a good time um, I know I'm going to try to. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down Twitter because, yeah, all this shit about what the princess apologizes for wearing a racist brooch. Really? Brooches are racist. Oh, good. Look. Please don't make me drop an F bomb this early. It's not even 10 minutes in. Oy vey. Um, over here on Minds, I, I really don't see anybody. So, you know, if they don't mind, it don't matter. And, and I don't mind. <laughs> That's people say I just don't behave. But really, seriously, I don't mind. Over here on Freedoms Network. Thank you, Grimner, for sharing me over there. I truly appreciate that, hon. Yeah, I'm live and in person or, well, on the radio, cybernetically speaking. 
<laughs> Grimmy's over here. I'm over here. Bobby was over here earlier. So was the lovely Mary B from Down Under. And KD Troxel. Hey, KD. How you doing, hon? He shared Wizard of Paws. Oh, yeah. P.O. <clears throat> That's supposed to be P.O.S., not P.O.Z. Hmm. Oh, well. It's fugly. Whatever it is. So... Moving along. Hi there, everybody over on Freedoms Network. Over here in the corner pocket, JJ's has quit. Damn it. I see Ville is here, and he's cussing out the bots. Damn it. I hate when that happens. Um, knowledge is knowing a spinach is a vegetable. Wisdom is not putting it in a vegetable salad. No, I like spinach in my vegetable salad. Raw spinach. You don't want to put cooked spinach in there. That's just nasty. Cooked spinach is good once in a while with a little bit of salt, a little bit of vinegar. But other than that, it's like, mmm. -hmm. And I saw something earlier today about, um, yeah, you have to be very, very careful. Because now, whatever it is that they're lining the cans with, yeah, it's messing with your, is that the endocrine system that it's messing with? It's messing with your, it's messing with your system. It's got estrogen in it. It's feminizing the man folk, don't you know? Yippee. Um, hi, Marcy. Hi, Darwin. Hi, Tom. I see you guys over here on Fakie Book. And Jody. Yay, I do have some people over there. And, oh, good Lord, no, no, honey. Oh, that's just wrong. Wrong. Oh, someone just shared a picture of someone from Walmart. Oh, you know those people of Walmart, do they not have friends? Seriously? I mean, you know, if you have real friends that say, oh, honey, no, that's, that's not a good look for you around the house let alone going out in public oh my lord oh i will never grab another handrail again yeah uh sorry i'm i'm not mm -mm, mm -mm. okay i'm just gonna move along over here to the rlm and kind of scrub that bad boy out of my mind friday nights on the interwebs yes they are rather interesting rednecks are fun i like rednecks <laughs> hmm. Fud is here. Hi, Bois de Fud. It's Bois de Fud. Yay! You can't tend. Oh, what you don't have. That's true. That's true. Um. Oh, yeah. Bisphenol something or other, and it it's feminizing the men. Yeah, them feminazis are really getting... Um, I know. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I see you guys are giving me static for Stalin. Okay, over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be if you want to give me static. Please, if you're listening in over on Spreaker, come on over to reallibertymedia.com and log into the chat because I don't check the chat on Spreaker. I, uh, I'm techno-challenged. Use my block options. I have a block and I walk around it. And that, I, you know, sometimes I do three laps and then I get really dizzy. But I tell people I walked around the block three times. There's my workout for the day. So it's it's a little two by four. <laughs> it's a cute little thing. Okay, over here in the RLM, Barman is right up top. Who is the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world? I just got to tell you because, you know, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I also see Cowboy Tech is here. I hope you're hearing pleasant voices, darling. And looky there, Grimner, who is the creator of Barman and the RLM God. And he will be on later on this evening with the lovely Moose Girl for the Freakers Ball, the Christmas freakers ball and it looks like they've got some really interesting songs i really i almost did grandma got run over by a reindeer but i didn't want to put that kind of energy out into the um oh static oh thank you guest nine <laughs> I didn't want to put that energy out into the universe just in case the universe thought, let's mess with her. Because <laughs> it does that from time to time, don't you know? 
I also see the lovely Kate is here. Hi, Kate. How's things down Florida? And Asmo is here. Hi, Asmo. He is the, um, what is, he's, he's an interwebs entrepreneur. I can't remember the name of that place. It. <laughs> eBay. That's what it is. He sells stuff on eBay. And Beth Z is here. Hey, Beth Z. How are you doing way up there in the great white north of Kanukistan? Chalcedony is also here. And looky there, Circle from Denmark. Hey, sister. Circles, how are you doing, lady? I hope you're having an absolutely amazing evening. And I hope it's, I know it's dark. Hell, it's dark here already. But yeah. I love you, sweetie. Um, polish the freaker's balls. Oh, that's just wrong. <laughs> I almost read that as Polish. It's like, ooh, wait a minute here. It all depends on where you put the emphasis, doesn't it? I also see, let's see, did I say, yeah, I did. Chloe is here. Gotta have the E because she's got that many. Free enslaved, also from the great state of Florida. I'm here. Yay, I'm here until the reindeer show up. I be Don C. Happy birthday to you a day late. Happy birthday to you a day late. Bet you could have gone your whole life without that, couldn't you? <laughs> I also see Java, 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 Java. Dr. Dew is in the house. Hey, Java, how are you? And Juana Taco. You know what? I got leftover chili. So... That's close, but no, I have tamales, I have cheese, I have lettuce. I could make really, really sloppy tacos. They would be sloppy tacos instead of sloppy joes. <laughs> Meister Brow is here. Hey, Woody Party. And the lovely Rain is in the house. Yeah, well, you don't want Rain in your house because that means you got to call a plumber. But Rain can come to your house, come to visit. That would be cool. RLM Fluke is also here. They can polish their own damn balls. You tell them, Grim. <laughs> More than three times and you're not washing anymore. You're playing with yourself. Just putting that out there, too. I also, yeah, RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. And looky there, Rob Works. Where's the bubbler, hon? Tiny bubbles. Where's the bubbles? I also see trust no one is here. Yeah, I saw that Bitcoin kind of did a douche, but now it's kind of making a comeback. So not that I really pay that whole hell of a lot of attention, but it never it always seemed like today whenever I would peek in and see what was going on in the RLM chat, somebody was checking the Bitcoin prices. And so it was like, oh, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. It's almost like a teeter-totter. I also see Vinny is here from Vegas. Vinny in Vegas. You know, that almost sounds like a mobster movie. You ought to do that, Vinny. Vinny in Vegas. The hillbilly mobster. <laughs> I'd watch it. I also see Beetle. Hey, Beetle. He's logged in, but he's not necessarily here. Uh, Colfax 101 is away, but still showing up in the chat, as well as Dakota and Dima, who usually beats me to the ducks over there in the corner pocket. Damn it. Dima's just so fast. Flash Nasty is also staying up late tonight. Hey, Flash Rooney, how you doing, dude? And Frumpy. Hi, Frumpy. Um, a six-minute intro? No, no, it's not coast to coast, honey. It's Booneyville, USA. <laughs> I also see my brother Fud is here. Hi, Fud. How you doing? How's your lovely bride doing? And looky there, guest twenty-four four ninety-one. Let's say twenty. Okay, that's ten ten. Hey, guest ten ten. I could do that. That would be cool. Yeah. Um, and guest nine. <laughs> That's an easy one, too. As well as Kozu is in the house. And moi, 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 moi. I want moi, moi, moi. Is that a song? Should be. Poxified is here, as well as Pom 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 Sauce. And looky there, Slim Jim Flim and Teddy the Cuddly One. And to round out the crew, the one, the only. <laughs> 
Phantom, who did my intro for me. Thank you ever so much, Phantom. Oh, you the man. You the god dang man. Um, ho, ho. Ho, ho. Fucking ho. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Hi, Gary L. I see you, hon. Say hey to Gigi's boo for me. Um, and you're welcome, Vinny in Vegas. Vegas Vinny. There you go. <laughs> okay, I'm going to see what... Okay. I had to check some notifications real quick. Now, I am going to... Oh, Tim Gallagher over here on Fakie Book said, Today is the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year. 23rd, or 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, these three days stay exactly as long as today. The 25th, the days start to get one minute longer because the sun has risen. Ha ha! And uh, people that worship Jesus are really worshiping the sun. Mm. I hate to be the one to tell you this, but Jesus isn't coming back. Oh no, Tim, I know Tim, you're an atheist. I know this. And that's okay, you believe what you want to believe. There's Cowboy again. Oh, and thank you for that bubbler, Rob. I'm going to get a cybernetic contact high off of that thing. So, <laughs> thanks, Rob. You know, people, y'all need to realize, I'm just drinking coffee here. You know, and and I think I've only, I've only consumed adult beverages once on the radio. And I actually listened to that show later, and I thought, I'm not doing that shit again. <laughs> I do like that song, Grimmy. <laughs> and I've been known to say that, sing that a time or two. I actually um, have been telling everybody when I hang up with them at work, uh, Merry Christmas, and nobody's grumbled at me. And I had one of the guys said, yeah, I'm glad you're not saying Happy Holidays. And I said, well, you know, I grew up saying Merry Christmas. It just feels natural for me. So if someone has a problem with that, you know, plug your ears. And if you don't want to see me dressed up in Christmas garb, because I've done that every day this week, and I think I've won the ugly sweater contest multiple times this week. <laughs> I have fun wearing loud and gaudy, and I got them from my mother. So, which reminds me, I was going to tell you guys how um, from the I come by it honestly section of Grammy. <laughs> My mother called earlier today, and it was like around 1230 or whatever, and she said, so what are you doing? And I said, I'm working. And she said, you're working? What day is it? <laughs> and I said, Mom, it's Friday. And she went, you're working today? And I said, uh, yeah, I am. Well, then she proceeded to tell me about putting up pictures and all kinds of other fun stuff. And telling me how um, she just loved looking at all of us kids' uh, elementary school pictures. And saying how we were so adorable. And she said that multiple times, that we were so adorable. So I finally said, Mom, you keep saying we were adorable. Are you implying something here? And she said, well, some of you aren't so adorable anymore. <laughs> Oh, but she still loves us. See how she is. And she let us all live through puberty so that we could go forth and propagate and give her grandchildren and she can sit back and go, <laughs> how you liking it now? Because, yeah, adulting isn't exactly easy, especially when you have to throw parenting in there along with it. It's like, well, you mean I got to not only be a parent, but I have to be the adult in the equation, which unfortunately, that's what's wrong with a lot of these children these days is parents were trying to be friends instead of parents. And so children did not get reprimanded like I think they should have, you know, at least told, sorry, honey, just because you participated doesn't mean you get a great big shiny trophy, you know, because that the. It seems to be that's that's the mindset of a lot of younger people. Not all of them. I'm not going to say I'm not even going to say half of them because 
I really, those that I'm around, I don't see that much. But man, you see a lot of it on the interwebs. And it's on the interwebs, so it must be true. <laughs> Would I lie to you? In any case, in case y'all were wondering why I am the way I am. Yeah, that little story I told you about my mom. Yeah, that, that, that pretty much should tell you why I am the way I am. Because I come by it honestly. In any case, back to, it's on the interwebs, so it must be true. And seeing as how it's from the New York Times, oh yeah, double dipping of it must be true, right? Right. The uh, a federal ban on making lethal viruses is lifted. Well, isn't that just sweet? I just think that's just absolutely special. And it's from... Uh, the 19th of this month. So, hey, it's even current. The NIH will create expert panels to assess controversial research into creating pathogens that easily infect humans. Well, <laughs> yeah, if it's anything like any of your other panels, we're screwed. We're screwed. May as well all just change our names to Ben Dover, and you know, at least that way we will confuse them. Hey, Ben! Huh? Everybody turns around. <laughs> okay, apparently federal officials on Tuesday ended a moratorium imposed three years ago on funding research that alters germs to make them more lethal. Oh, so they only came up with this like three years ago, and now they said, nah, why bother? We've got all of these lethal ones that are, you know, they're, we've got a back stock of this stuff. We've got to get rid of it. Uh-huh. Such work can now proceed, said Dr. Francis S. Collins. Why, thank you. See, that's why doctor doesn't necessarily mean doodly squat anymore. Because you can pass medical school with a C- minus and still be called doctor. Uh, by the way, there was also another famous person called Dr. Dr. Mengele. Yay. Um, so, Dr. Francis, who is the head of the National Institutes of Health, once again, anything that the government names, it's you can pretty much bet your bottom dollar that uh, it's going to do the exact opposite. So, National Institutes of Health, yeah, right. <laughs> Yes, I did, Vinny. Yes, I did. Um, okay, so, apparently, uh, only if a scientific panel decides that the benefits justify the risks. Now, is this the same scientific panel that said that it is possible for humans and robots to procreate? Now, I'm not saying just, just bump and uglies kind of stuff. I'm saying procreate, as in create another one. Because, well, science and all. Yeah, scientists say all kinds of shit. That doesn't necessarily... That's why they have theories. And yet, scientific theories are taken seriously. Whereas, conspiracy theories are poo-pooed. And they give you a little tinfoil hat. Thank you. It will go with my collection. Some scientists are eager to pursue these studies because they may show, for example, how bird flu could mutate to more easily infect humans. And let's find out, shall we? We'll just drop this on an unsuspecting populace and see how it works. And then we'll tell them we've got a vaccine. Oh, hey, and it just said, or they could yield clues to making a better vaccine. Yeah, see, I wonder if the CDC's got a patent on that shit already. They do own multiple vaccine patents. You know, so they're in it for the money. <clears throat> Critics say that these researchers risk creating a monster germ that could escape the lab and seed a pandemic. Um... Oh, God, what was that movie from the early 70s? Mm, I can see it, but I can't think of the name of it now. Oh, well. <clears throat> so now a government panel, oh, great, will require that researchers show that their studies in this area are scientifically sound and that they will be done in a high-security lab. Yeah, uh-huh. Sure. I like, I'm going to trust you with that one. Yeah. 
the pathogen to be modified must pose a serious health risk. <laughs> Because <laughs> if it doesn't, why bother? By the way, when you create it, we will seize it for national security purposes <laughs> to use at a later date. Yeah. Oh, such as a vaccine. You know vaccines don't go through nearly as stringent. I love how they put that. And, and yeah, I read an article not too long ago that, yeah, nearly as stringent testing as the drugs that they put out on the markets. Now those drugs get fast-tracked to start with. And, well, you know, you can be rather selective with your data because if the data kind of shows that the drug, well, it, <laughs> it actually kills more people than it helps. Well, you know, if you just kind of selectively edit your data sets, you don't have to include that in your report. And so then you can make money. Booyah! Bonus round! And and the really way cool thing about this <laughs> is that vaccines go through a less stringent process. Doesn't that give you a warm fuzzy feeling? Like right before you have a serious bout of diarrhea or vomiting uncontrollably, which is what the vaccine is for, I'm sure. Mm. We see this as a rigorous policy, says Dr. Campbell. And we want to be sure you're doing this right. Because if you're not, well, we're going to go ahead and seize the stuff anyway for national security purposes. Mm. <laughs> What's that? No, it wasn't. No, Grimmy, not the stand. It was that other one where they were in a lab and this... Mm, Oh, darn. It's older than the stand. Older than the stand. Um, gosh, darn it. It wasn't a Stephen King. Uh, I'll think of it at 2 in the morning. <laughs> the stand was a good one, but no, it wasn't that one. Um, Soylent Green is popping in my head, and I know that's not it, but it was it was pre-Soylent Green. They were, they, they eventually, you know, it eventually died. The virus itself eventually died so the people could come out of the sealed lab. But yeah, it was, it was not cool. It was not a cool thing. In any case, oh, I know it was the baby because the baby was crying all the time. That's what it was. In any case, uh, back to this. Hmm. Okay, in October 2014, all federal funding was halted on efforts to make three viruses more dangerous, the flu virus and those causing Middle East Respiratory system, uh, Syndrome and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS. Hmm. Outbreak. Yeah. Yeah, there you go, Frumpy. I think that... Hmm. I don't... Oh, I can almost see the actors even. I mean, I I can see the the set and everything, and it's like it's like it's in an um, a beefed up um, old missile silo kind of thing. Whatever, somebody will think of it, and then I'll go, yeah, that one. In any case, back to this. But apparently, the new regulations apply to any pathogen that could potentially cause a pandemic. Cause you know, you guys aren't dying off fast enough. They gotta, they gotta speed this shit up. Cause you know those, those, those rocks. Um, <laughs> I brain farts are us by Grammy Mary. That's what tonight's show should be called. Brain farts are us. What Georgia Guidestones. There you go. Yeah, apparently we aren't dying off fast enough. Damn it. Sorry. No, I'm not. But, you know, these people that seem to think that there's overpopulation going on. Okay, sweetheart, if you really seriously, honestly think that for the betterment of humanity, there's overpopulation going on and some people just plain need to leave the building or leave the planet, oh, you know as in let your meat suit expire you first hun you first go ahead and lead the way i'm sure we will eventually get to andromeda strain there you go there you go grim yeah okay see okay so it was a little bit it was a little bit off so it wasn't yeah but that came from space plan nine from outer space 
<laughs> yeah, okay, sorry. So it wasn't a virus. It was some freaky ass shit. Uh, okay. Outbreak was a cool flick, though. Yeah. Okay. So, back to, where was I at? Where was I at? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, apparently, <clears throat> let's see, they would apply this request to uh, create an Ebola virus transmittable through the air. Well, because, you know, people just weren't stepping up for that Ebola vaccination that, by the way, the CDC owns the patent on that one. Wink, wink. No, there's no conflict of interest here. There has been a long, fierce debate about projects known as gain-of-function research intended to make pathogens more deadly or more transmissible. Hmm, you guys are just so wonderful. In 2011, there was an outcry that arose when laboratories in Wisconsin and the Netherlands revealed that they were trying to mutate a lethal H5N1 bird flu in ways that would let it jump between ferrets. Well, that's just not cool. Which are used to model human flu susceptibility. You guys really need to stop doing this stuff. You really do. If you're going out and intentionally killing critters just so you can find out how deadly something is, you're sick, okay? And I'm sorry, it's so early in the show, but you really are sick mofos. Damn it all. Apparently, tensions rose in 2014 after the Centers for Disease Control. Yeah, you know how they control it, don't you? It says and prevention, but no. It's If you'll notice, their alphabet soup moniker is CDC. So the Centers for Disease Control accidentally, wink, 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 exposed lab workers to anthrax and shipped a deadly flu virus to a vac uh, laboratory that had asked for a benign strain. So, yes, government efficiency at work. Well, do you feel special? Do you feel as though they're doing everything for your own good? Mind you. Space dust. That's right. Um, okay. Oh, planned obsolescence requires slave participation at all financial levels. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Which is why nothing lasts, you know, it used to be that when you bought a washer and dryer, you could expect that set to last a minimum of 15 years, if not 30 years. You know, just like refrigerators, you could expect them to last that long. But now it's, oh no, they have a three-year warranty if you're lucky. And if you're really lucky, they will die shortly after. <laughs> The warranty runs out. So, um, oh, you're not homesick anymore? Oh, well, I'm glad, guest nine. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Doesn't that feel wonderful? What is that? Yes, true, Gary L. They manage cancer, the Centers for Disease Management. That's why it's no longer the healthcare system, it is the disease management system. I have heard quote unquote healthcare professionals say that they are now starting to refer to themselves as disease management system and workers. Yeah, they are managing your disease. For their own profit, by the way. Doesn't that make you feel wonderful? You're being beneficial to society. Oh, yay, you guys are doing... Thank you, Gary L., for that post over there on the Freedoms Network. Yay, Gary L. and Gigi's Boo will be on Sunday night with The Road Less Traveled. Awesome! They will share very unusual and inspiring Christmas stories from history. Sweet! Thank you, Gary L., for that update. I truly appreciate that. Makes my job a little bit easier at the end of the show. 
<laughs> okay, I just blabber, but it works. It works. Okay, I'm getting this shared over here on uh, this effing site. This effing site is just so effing awesome. Although, mm, this link is not, but for, you know, forewarned is forearmed, I guess you could say. And if you have forearms, then I'm sure the ladies that you date are going, what the hell? That's not fair. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to go look in my pocket because I know I did put some stuff in my pocket that was somewhat, I thought, interesting. Like um, that meme from Mines. I do think that is very funny. Um, it is a an image of a alien aliens. Winter solstice. The sun, S-U-N, of God shall rise in three days, we said. We did leave a note. Can't you fuckers read? Which I found that extremely amusing. Um... Oh, your socks are brown. I'm happy for you, Guest 9. Were they white when you purchased them? <laughs> I think my mother's range is probably an early 70s model as well, Grim. She doesn't use it that much anymore except for like holding pots and pans. <laughs> Goofy woman. Um, let's see. Yeah. Five-year expectance on fridges now. Isn't that just sad? Four arms beats a full house. Well, you know, if you got four arms, uh, I'm just not going to go there. Um, you know what, Frumpy? The fridge out in my, out in the, what is affectionately referred to as the man cave, because that's what Poocher called it when he purchased the, this property, um, and the name stuck um, out in the cave. No, I have not talked about tranny kids stuff. No, that's just wrong. Um, in any case, that fridge out there is probably 30 years old. So, my fridge here in the house, because I had to buy a new fridge, so it's new, or new, newer. But, somebody get that duck. Get it. Get it. So, okay. Thank you, Gary L. Gary's having duck for supper tomorrow night. <laughs> okay. So, if you live in the Ozarks and your husband wears a wife beater, they last longer. Oh. Wow. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Y'all are crazy. Okay. I'm going to go back to my pocket. Now that I've, now that I've been obnoxious. Um... Okay. Oh, yeah. This is one I wanted to get to. Robots made from DNA could one day transport medicines inside your body. I think that is nanotechnology. Am I correct on that? I'm thinking that, yeah. Who is that? Oh, she's not pretty at all. Sorry. Meme on the other side. Okay. Mm. Uh, back to this. So, and it's from September of this year. So, in a classic 1966 American science fiction film, Fantastic Voyage, which I saw that, a submarine crew was miniaturized and injected into a body to fix a blood clot in the brain. That's obviously not how future medicine, medical science is going to work, but the notion of creating microscopic machines to perform complex tasks is certainly on point. A recent advance in which robots made from DNA were programmed to sort and deliver molecules to a specified location now represents an important step in this futuristic direction, which that's all way cool and fascinating, but my my tinfoil hatter side says somebody is going to use that for nefarious purposes. Whereas if you just eat right, Mother Nature gave us a plethora of things to consume that uh, will deal with most of that stuff. Yes, Grimmy did fill. Um. <laughs> oh, 
fun. How funny. My mother apparently is on a roll. She called brother and talked about kid pics. She's so funny. Oh, goodness. Okay, back to this. <clears throat> It's still early days for nanotech, but new research from the California Institute of Technology is showcasing the tremendous potential of this pint-sized technology. If it's pint-sized, that's a little bit big for injecting, unless you're talking nano-sized. And if you're talking nano-sized, then please be specific, because my mind is Pacific. Oh, no, wait, it's not an ocean. It's more like a attic with lots of cobwebs. <laughs> Apparently a Caltech research team her um headed by Anupama. Hello Anupama. Thub wow, you guys come up with the really interesting names. And I'll just say Anupama and Lulu. Um, it's built robots from DNA and programmed them to bring individual molecules to a designated location. So they fetch their nano pets. How cool! Eventually, this technology could be used to transport molecules of many types throughout the body. And that's what concerns me. It's the of many types. You know, like, mm, oh, let's see, the... The stuff that got Andrew Breitbart. Oh, wait a minute. There's my tinfoil hat showing again. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, which could potentially transform everything from drug delivery to how the body fights infections to how microscopic measurements are made. Mm. Could potentially. Could be wonderful. Let's just keep those crazy mad scientists out of that shit, okay? There are currently three emerging fields within DNA nanoscience. The science of creating molecular sized devices out of DNA, the self-assembly of nanostructures from DNA strands, and molecular computation and data storage, which would be way cool. I just, I do have one question. I was listening to a Graham Hancock thing last night, and uh, I want to know how much junk DNA is going to be incorporated into this because they say humans have what is it 97 percent of their dna is junk dna they call it junk dna because they don't know what the hell it does basically so therefore it must be junk must be junk must be just a whole bunch of crap that well we just kind of stuck it on there because we didn't want to pay rent on a storage facility yeah apparently the um DNA Robotics is the focus of the study published today in Science, which actually it was published in September. Um, <laughs> looks like these wonderful things could be used to reach cancerous tumors and all kinds of other fun things, and yet once again, Mother Nature has things that do this. But humans, being ever so smart, Letting their technology outpace their spirituality. Oh, a nano pint? Yeah, coming to a bar near you. <laughs> I'll have a nano pint of Gillies. <laughs> Thanks. I feel much better now. Yeah. Not. Okay, Borg shit, DARPA. I'm catching up on the chit chat over here. Um, more like a hoof, oh, a hoof print full of water. <laughs> hey, a nano chia pet. There you go. I like that idea, Gariel. You can make a lot of money. Hell, that guy made, didn't he become a millionaire selling, um, pet rocks? I mean, cripes, people will buy anything. <laughs> Which is a really sad commentary on humanity. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put this over on mines as well. Let's see. Is anyone using this for... <clears throat> I 
I said bad purposes because I don't know how to spell nefarious. <laughs> I'm sure I could do one of those little Google and start typing, but it takes me long enough to type anyway because I have stutter fingers. No, it's not a fatal disease, but it is one anyway. It's mine. I have it. I named it. I created it. Okay. Um, let's see. Where else do I want to go? I want to go somewhere cool. So let's check this one out. It's from worldtruth.tv. And I saw it earlier today on Twitter. And I thought, ah, the Yucatan Hall of Records and the Atlantis Connection. How cool. Um, let's see. The Yucatan Hall of Records is a mystical library buried somewhere in Egypt. So why is the Yucatan Hall of Records buried in Egypt? Is that one of those trick questions like who's buried in Grant's tomb? I'm just curious. Um, apparently, one suggestion has it that it's under the Great Sphinx of Giza which is in the Giza Pyramid Complex. No, really? The Great Sphinx of Giza is in the Giza Complex. Well, once again, um, either this is a trick question or we're playing Captain Redundant. <laughs> or Captain Obvious, however you wish to put it. It is rumored to house the knowledge of the Egyptians by papyrus scrolls and the history of the lost continent of Atlantis, much as the Great Library of Alexandria housed Grecian knowledge. Although I, mm, I'm thinking there was places older than that, but whatever. This is a um, this is little evidence to indicate that the hall actually exists. However, oh here we go again. Some scientists have been ground or have been using ground penetrating radar and it has shown that there are in fact cavities underneath the Great Sphinx. So either the Great Sphinx rolled over at one time and those divots just didn't fill in. Moving along. Apparently there is a video below. <clears throat> cool. That um World-renowned psychic Edgar Cayce believed the Atlanteans created three ancient halls of record and believed to be located in Egypt, the Bahamas, and the Yucatan. So why, once again, why is the Yucatan Hall of Records in the Great Sphinx of Giza? Why in the hell isn't it in the Yucatan? Why did you name it the Yucatan Hall of Records if it's not in the Yucatan? Duh. So, I'm going to go ahead and share this and... I, th I thought this was kind of fascinating to start with. I just thought, uh oh, Yucatan Hall of Records. How cool. There's another one. <clears throat> Over the counter drugs will work. Uh, Captain Retard. Yes, yes, I resemble that one as well. <laughs> um, I don't know if they've seen a shrink for that complex or not, FUD. But, you know, I would be concerned because a lot of these uh, shrinks, I I'd, I'd read something the other day that, um, you know, all of them are like Freudian kind of shrinks. And when you stop and think of all of the things that um, that Freud was obsessed with, and then you start going, wow, he needed the couch worse than his patients did. Freud was having some serious problems there. Mm, and that's true, Gary. You cannot patent Mother Nature. Oh, darn. Oh, darn. <laughs> I hate when that happens. In any case, seeing as how this was, um, oh, wow, I did not mean to go there. Huh. Um, see, that's what happens when you just click randomly. It's like, oh, hello. Now, that was talking about Edgar Casey, which brings me to another Edgar Casey that I have, and I'm I'm extremely fascinated by Edgar Casey. This guy was, he did some amazing stuff, and he made some really cool predictions, and you know, much like Nostradamus, I'm sure you can make them after the fact. Go, yeah, Nostradamus predicted that. Yeah, Edgar Casey predicted that. You know. 
2020 hindsight, you can, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of prophets are really good at saying, you know, I said 20 years ago that this was going to happen. I don't have any documented proof that I said it, but I said 20 years ago that this was going to happen. I told you and you didn't listen. Were you out in the forest and nobody else was there? Oh, well. Hmm. This is from EducateInspireChange.org. Hello, rascal. I know you're going to help me with the radio tonight. Eighty years ago, the sleeping prophet Edgar Cayce predicted Putin's role in stopping World War III. Now, see, already they are slanting it. Already. They are, you know, just with the headline. It's one of those grab your eyes, pull you in. So watching geopolitical events unfold today is like watching a slow motion train wreck. Agreed. Especially if you're informed by history and understand the connection between world wars and the unseen influences behind international politics and global banking. Follow the money. Edgar Casey is one of the world's most revered psychics, the sleeping prophet, as they called him, and many consider him to be the father of holistic medicine. Entering into a trance-like state of consciousness at will, he could divine information from some extraordinary plane of existence, or the Akashic Records, I believe that's what that's called, or some people call it that, <clears throat> on behalf of his patients or in response to specific queries from an audience. He was remarkably insightful and accurate, which is why his name is so familiar to so many. Much of what he brought back from the source of his inspired information pertained to specific medical issues, but in the staggering volumes of his readings and written works, there is an abundance of insight and prophecy related to larger global political and social events. Dreams are today's answer to tomorrow's questions. Edgar Casey. So many of Casey's psychic readings occurred in the early part of the 20th century during two or you know, during two world wars and the Great Depression. But before his death in 1947, he had already seen many of his predictions come true, including foretelling the stock market crash of 1929, which was manipulated by bankers, foreseeing events related to both world wars, which were manipulated by bankers and profiteers who were selling to both sides of the equation, and even the warning of the untimely death of two American presidents. In a series of what he called a world affairs readings, Casey made many remarkable statements about the future of world finance, world leadership, collective spirituality, and interestingly, the role that somehow Russia was to play as a force for as a force of right in the coming global turmoil that we see unfolding before our eyes today. Now, when I see that as Russia was to play a force of right, as soon as I saw that, my mind went to the Ringing Cedars books. Because there, that is quite the movement from what I understand. Once again, getting most of my information off of the interwebs, which it must be true, it's on the interwebs, but I see that as more of a force than Putin himself. And I know a lot of people tell me, don't trust him, he used to be KGB. Well, you know what? I used to be a lot of things. That doesn't mean I am anymore. They are part of my past. That is part of his past. If he's still using that, well, it is part of him, but... You know, a lot of people have done things that it's when they continue to do those things that you go, yeah, a zebra don't change its spots. <laughs> Apparently, Casey foresaw that future world crisis would hinge on finance. Huh, shocker. And he pointed to Russia as being the thorn in the side of financial powers that were organizing themselves against the good of humanity. 
This was in a post-World War II world. When asked in 1932 about political and economic trends in Europe, Casey zeroed in on Russia. Europe is a house broken up. Some years ago, there was an experience of a mighty people's being overridden for the gratification and satisf satisfaction of a few, irrespective of other any other man's rights. That peoples are going through the experience of being born again and is the thorn in the flesh to many a political and financial nation in Europe, in the world. The question what is the name of that nation referred to? And the answer was Russia. Seventy years after the defeat of the Axis powers, Russia has been reborn. But the rest of the world is now largely under the thumb, quite literally, of the Western globalist banking cartel. This cartel is organized as the IMF, the World Bank, the Bank for International Settlements, and the global network of central banks, reserve banks, development banks, and investment banks that hold the world's elected governments, selected governments, in perpetual receivership, and the world's people in bondage to mathematically impossible to pay debt. And it is. I mean, the world is supposedly in $55 trillion in debt. Who do we owe that to? How many people played with the numbers? How many people put an extra zero on the end every once in a while just for shits and giggles? That's what I want to know. Present day edge of the knife is, in 2013, the U.S. was attempting to invade Syria under obviously false pretenses. Putin prevented U.S. involvement by threatening to intervene militarily in a conflict that at that time had not yet devolved into the horrid conditions we see today. With the deliberate destruction of Ukraine by the George Soros-funded Color Revolution Destabil Destabilization Team, then the advances of the IMF to debt conquer Ukraine with tens of billions with a B of dollars in forced development loans, Putin's Russia emerged as a singular force capable of checking the banking cabal's global advance and is refusing to allow Ukraine and Crimea to fall into the hands of Western-backed forces. The grand chessboard that is the Middle East is ablaze and the world is on a razor's edge, caught between the very real possibility of escalation to third world war, which I think is already going on, and the battlefield is your mind, and the seemingly distant hope of world leaders suddenly finding sanity and de-escalating the situation, which, huh... To be judged insane in an insane world is not necessarily a bad thing. Not necessarily. Casey spoke of Russia's role as being the hope of the world in a coming time such as this. In Russia there comes the hope of the world, not as that sometimes termed of the communistic or Bolshevik. No, but freedom. Freedom that each man will live for his fellow man. The principle has been born. It will take years for it to be crystallized. But out of Russia comes again the hope of the world. That was Edgar Cayce, 1944. As events in Syria and Iraq have become more convoluted and devastating for people in the region, the Islamic State, ISIS, has been on a campaign of shock and awe. Huh, quinky dink, that's what we called one of our little in, uh, incursions over there. Shock and awe. You know, if you give it a catchphrase, then it sells much better through the corporate lame-ass propaganda system. 
Apparently they are raining bloody terror on Christians, Syrians, Kurds, moderate Muslims, Shia Muslims, and anyone in between. In other words, if you isn't with us, we going to bomb your ass. We going to mutilate your ass. We going to cut your heads off. We're going to do whatever we can. Why? Because they're Captain Assholios is why. ISIS, as everyone apparently knows, is funded and supplied weaponry by the U.S. and Israel. Don't forget Saudi Arabia. That's not mentioned here, but Saudi Arabia is also in that kettle. As a means of indirectly toppling the Assad regime in Syria. As the U.S. and its allies pretend like they are not responsible for ISIS and act like they are powerless to stop ISIS, Putin has calmly told the world in no uncertain terms the truth about the West's support for ISIS and other mercenary factions which have completely destroyed Syria, already killed hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions, and forced the engineered refugee crisis on Europe expanding the crisis now into Macedonia. Huh. Okay, there is a video here. And under the video it says, uh, Russia has quickly been able to stop ISIS in its tracks by destroying ammunition dumps and supply lines, which is how you take out. You, you control their supplies. That's pretty much, you know, and that's another thing that, um, and I didn't realize it until Flash had sent me some information. Um, you know, a lot of, or some of the reason why people were so emaciated in concentration camps, and it wasn't just those that were being held there, because a lot of those that were being held there were slave labor. And yeah, as the supply lines dwindled, and people of Germany, period, were starving what was getting to the concentration camps to not only feed those that were guarding the ones in there but also those that were in there because those that were guarding actually got the food before so it's no damn wonder when you look at you know you look at everything involved there am i saying that those people weren't total douchebags no i'm not but i'm saying there's a hell of a lot more involved in this than just those damn those damn germans yeah. Talk to Henry Ford. Oh, wait, he's dead. He made money off both sides of that equation. Talk to the Rockefellers. They made money off both sides of that equation. Talk about the Roth. Talk to the Rothschilds. They made money off both sides of that equation. There's an awful lot more to it than what people, you know, than what you're being fed, even in the history books. And history is his story. He who wins gets to tell the story his way. In any case, <clears throat> um, there is a, apparently a spiritual development and leadership of Russia. Even before World War II, Casey appears to have foreseen the need for Russia to evolve spiritually in some manner so that it could be able to rise in opposition to the decaying moral values of the West, capitalist West and play its part as the great hope of the world. Casey was asked, what should be the attitude of so-called capitalist nations towards Russia? And his response was, on Russia's religious development will come the greater hope of the world. Then that one, or group, that is the closer in its relationships may fare the better in the gradual changes and final settlements of conditions as to the rule of the world. Six months later, additional information was presented which helped to clarify this earlier prediction. Out of Russia, you see, there may come that which may be the basis for a more worldwide religious thought or trend, which is what makes me go more towards the Ringing Cedars and Anastasia and the whole thing that, um, you know, people, people being self-sufficient 
and not imposing themselves on others and getting away from a totally capitalistic society, getting away from a monetary system. I think it's kind of cool myself. I haven't finished the books yet, but I'm enjoying what I have read. Um, when Hugh Lynn Casey asked about the Russian situation in June 30, uh, 1938, he was told a new understanding has and will come to the troubled people. Here, because of the yoke of oppression, because of the self-indulgences, has arisen another extreme. Only when there is freedom of speech, <clears throat> excuse me, the right to worship according to the dictates of the conscience, until these come about, still turmoils will be within. Essentially, Casey appears to be referring to Russia after the trials under Soviet rule and the collapse of the Soviet Union, as well as the need for the world to return to humanistic values in order to free itself from the oppression of the Zionist cartels which have been organizing against the human race for centuries. Casey is saying that some sort of much-needed spiritual leadership will come from Russia in this time. Some kind of attitude that will make it possible for a transition of this caliber to occur without having to experience the guaranteed destruction of any World War III. Once again, World War III is already going on. It's a battle for your mind. Putin is at best no saint, and there is no underestimating the potential for deception by any nationalistic organization. But in a survey of major players on the field at the moment when the human race is teetering on the razor-sharp knife's edge, Putin appears to be bringing something to the table that other world leaders aren't wielding. Common sense, which, yeah... If you believe the translations, yeah. <laughs> I don't speak Russian, so I don't know exactly what he's saying. And apparently from some of the stuff that I've read about the Ringing Cedars and listened to the young man that was instrumental in getting it translated to English, Russia has a, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of nuance to its language. Um, so what would a spiritual leader look like in a world gone mad? At first, it would appear as common sense. Aristotle even goes so far as to say that common sense is where consciousness originates. So if a society is lacking in common sense and there's little to no conscience, morality, empathy, consciousness, creativity, taste, discernment, or love, how does one propose to govern such a population? It's a madhouse. It's a zoo. Actually, critters in a zoo would probably be offended by that reference. Putin's, sanction, or Putin's actions in Syria makes the most common sense among of the available options. Already, he has likely prevented the invasion of Syria by Turkey, checking pre uh, President Erdogan at the border, and he has severely disrupted the operations of ISIS. Both are wins for the cause of common sense in the arena of treachery. So did Casey somehow know that Russia would take the common sense gap between spiritual leadership and the guaranteed destruction in World War III? You must rise above the endless desire to dominate. You must stop acting out of imperialistic ambitions. Do not poison the minds of millions of people, like there can be no other way but imperialistic politics. That was from Vladimir Putin. Putin is directing our attention to the 800-pound gorilla in the room that no one else seems willing to talk about. America and the West no longer have any moral superiority in the world. Casey also made comments about America's future moral decay. In, a world, in the final World Affairs reading given on June 22, 1944, 
Less than six months before Edgar Cayce's death, he addresses the spirit and the sin of America. So what is the spirit of America? Most individuals proudly boast freedom. Freedom of what? When ye binds men's hearts and minds through various ways and manners, does it give them freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want? In the application of these principles, America may boast, but rather is that principle being forgotten? And that is the sin of America. And that was the reading that was given on in January. So in conclusion, did Casey foresee Putin's interfering role in the Western cabal plan to overtake the world through financial domination, political destabilization, and all-out war? Order out of chaos? Casey also predicted the possibility of a third world war. He spoke of strifes arising in Libya and in Egypt, in Ankara and in Syria through the straits around those areas above the Persian Gulf. So whether or not you believe <clears throat> excuse me, in the power of the human mind to connect with source and withdraw information about the future, things are lining up in such a way that Casey's prophecies regarding Russia are proving quite prescient, giving us a clue that at least we shouldn't hold on too tightly to any preconceived notions about what will happen in the coming years. And in a vacuum of any common sense or humanistic leadership from the present leeches that be, I refuse to call them powers that be, why not look to the revered psychic for direction? In the end, though, all we have from Casey is really just the inspiration to action that we get from looking into his past for clues and hope about our future. If you're concerned about the direction things are taking, let Casey's words rouse you into action. Now, I do think that people can get glimpses whether it be the Akashic field or whatever. But freedom, we really, you know, I got to admit, we really don't have the freedoms that people say, we're so free in America. We are free to let someone else whine enough and have an emotional boo-boo and it shuts down our ability to express ourselves. That's free? How many things do you have to purchase a permit for? Hmm? You know, you have to get a fishing license. You have to get a driver's license. You have to register your car. You have to get licensed to get married. You know, all this other fun shit. All these rules that they put out there. How free are we? are so free. We are free to add 80,000 pages of bureaucratic bullshit to the federal government just this year. 80,000 pages of new regulations or extensions on existing regulations. Wow, we are so free that we can brag about that and say that that's free. Did I wake up in opposite world? Because to me, that ain't free. That is controlled. Hmm. Oops. So I'm going to go ahead and share this over in the effing site and on mines. Okay. And that's what I, I love about this effing site is like, yay, Grimmy, I can do these goofy little emoticon thingies and I don't have to type. I just have to scroll and find something cool that works. And uh, it would be cool, you know, if that if that's the way things work out. But 
one thing that people don't I don't think really get is you can sit there and say that um, Putin is going to be the savior or whatever whatever but in order for you know it's like a video that I saw um, several months back and um, I think it was Simon can't think of Simon's last name Simon says um, but he was talking about it's not so much the first leader that is important because although that first person to do something they are important because they step out and they set an example for good or ill so that first person stepping up and doing something that's really cool but the key is when the second one follows suit and then when that's when other people start paying attention when the second one comes in and follows suit and then they see how the first person reacts to the second person and if they are encouraging and welcoming and showing the ropes if you will and helping out then more will join in so yeah it's there's nothing wrong with having someone step up with an acme light bulb moment kind of thing and go yeah I have this idea and it would make life so much better for a lot of people all you got to do is well you got to work you're gonna have to do something for yourself but the bonus is when you look back at the end of the day and you see everything that you accomplished you can sit back you may be tired you may have blisters but you can sit back and say I did that I did good I did that so see that's that's a reward that's way better than any kind of monetary reward being it having that satisfaction in a job well done and being responsible for yourself and being self-sufficient how awesome is that and those are things that people don't you know they aren't being taught that those are good things anymore they're being taught that you are owed well I'm sorry the universe allowed you to show up it doesn't owe you anything else it lets you be here now what are you gonna do with your time here because the universe don't owe, owe you shit if the universe gets tired of us being here can you say gamma ray <laughs> Can you say giant meteor? Can you say the big guy upstairs taking his big old etch a sketch and giving it a shake? I think you can. There are things beyond our control that can completely wipe us out. Now you can either dwell on that or you can try and make your time here quite pleasant and make it to where those around you actually enjoy being around you and you enjoy being around them hey what a novel idea so now that I've gone off on that lovely little tangent so uh, buy one at the price of two and get one free Wow <laughs> sounds like a hell of a deal um, yes FUD so long as we look to man to lead we will be disappointed sadly or if we look to an actually I would rephrase that bro so long as we look to another man to lead we will be disappointed if we look to ourselves to lead ourselves using our conscience then we may be disappointed from time to time but for the most part I look back on things and I think wow that was not necessarily a smart move but if I hadn't done what I did at that time whether it was dumb or hurtful to myself or hurtful to someone else or what have you um, if I had not done that I wouldn't be where I am right now you know all those dominoes got to fall into place at the right time and I really love where I am right now I really do 
Agreed, Gary. I'll respect nature because nature does not respect us. She does not need to. Mother Nature does not need to. And that is how you can pretty well judge someone's character. How they treat those that they cannot benefit from. That's how you can pretty much judge someone's character. How they treat those that they cannot benefit from. At least not financially or tangibly in this world. That's a pretty good, pretty good way of measuring people up. At least it works for me. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to go over to um, this one because I and it's another one from World Truth TV. He he was on a roll the other day. It's from February of this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. 31 Forgotten Native American Medical Cures. So, when it comes to herbal remedies, many of us are familiar with the benefits of echinacea, or purple cone flower as an antibiotic, willow bark as a painkiller, and aloe as a topical anesthetic and treatment for skin conditions. But that's common knowledge compared to the insights and treatments that Native American medicine men discovered and used. Native American medicine men developed a wheel very similar to the yin-yang of Asian medicine. The use of herbal remedies and other alternative forms of treatment was the cutting-edge medicine of their day, and quite frankly, it still is in my book. This is a holistic approach to medical treatment that relied heavily on plants and their unique benefits. So what follows is a list of indigenous plants, trees, fruits, flowers unique to North America that have surprising benefits as defined by Native American tribes. If and when times are tough, it might be good to keep some of these ancient cures in mind. They also are good for everyday needs when you consider how effective some of them can be. You know, like licorice tea for a sore throat. It's also interesting that many of these natural cures are still in use today, including beeswax and bee pollen, chamomile, um, chamomile, and others. It's a good demonstration of the benefit of wisdom developed over centuries. And it's hard to know how Native Americans determined which plants might have medicinal properties, although trial and error was probably one approach. It's also thought that they observed sick animals eating certain plants and determined that those plants must have a certain property worth exploring. Since that time, scientific studies have verified medicinal value of many plants. Once again, can't be patented because can't patent nature. <laughs> Darn it. Sorry, Big Pharma. In fact, common aspirin is derived from silicon, uh, or silicon, excuse me, a chemical in the inner bark of willow trees that was used in ancient times for fever and pain. These medicines were usually administered via teas or pastes that were either ingested or applied externally. Sometimes the plants were eaten as food or added to food or water. And on occasion, a salve or poultice was applied to open wounds. Although they would not recommend doing that, or this author would not recommend doing that. But I have, I have done poultices and, and salves and that kind of stuff. And I'm still here. I haven't had any adverse reactions yet. So, But what works for me doesn't necessarily work for everyone. So... You do have to be kind of careful, and that's why there's so many different plants that work for the same thing, because if one doesn't work for you, maybe another one will. If you're allergic to one, maybe you won't be allergic to the other one, and so it will. You know, there is no such critter as a one-size-fits-all. Um, so, the list is alfalfa which I didn't know this one. It relieves digestion and is used to aid blood clotting. 
contemporary uses include treatment of arthritis, bladder and kidney conditions, and bone strength, and it enhances the immune system. Aloe, which is a cactus-like plant, the thick leaves can be squeezed to extrude the thick sap that can be used to treat burns, insect bites, and wounds. And you can also take it for digestion issues as well. Number three, aspen. The inner bark is used in a tea to treat fever, coughs, and pain. And it contains salicin, which also is found in willow trees and is the foundation ingredient for aspirin. And, you know, you, you look at these things from nature and then you look at what happened to it when it got processed. Because if you take too much aspirin, you can get bleeding ulcers, mess with your liver. You know, it can cause all kinds of things. And is it necessarily, you know, the active ingredient or is it all the other garbage that's thrown in there in the process of processing the medicine? Number four, bee pollen. When mixed with food, it can boost energy, aid digestion, and enhance the immune system. And if you're allergic to bee stings, you will most likely be allergic to bee pollen as well. Also, beeswax is used as a salve for burns and insect bites, including bee stings. But it's intended for external use only. Blackberry, the root, bark, and leaves when crushed and infused in a tea are used to treat diarrhea, reduce inflammation, and stimulate the metabolism. As a gargle, it treats sore throats, mouth ulcers, and inflammation of the gums. Black raspberry, the roots of this plant are crushed and used as a tea or boiled and chewed to relieve coughs, diarrhea, and internal intestinal distress. Now, are you kind of starting to see a pattern here? How many things deal with intestinal tract, your digestive system? That's because if you cannot absorb the nutrients, if you cannot process them and get what is not beneficial for your body out of your system, the rest of your system is going to go haywire. Um, number eight is buckwheat. The seeds are used in soups and as porridge to lower blood pressure, help with blood clotting, and relieve diarrhea. Cayenne, which I love cayenne, the pods are used as a pain reliever when taken with food or drunk in a tea. Also used to treat arthritis and digestive stress, uh, distress, and it's sometimes applied to wounds as a powder to increase blood flow and act as an antiseptic and anesthetic to numb the pain. Which you, one would think, wow, cayenne is rather warm. I wouldn't imagine it numbing pain, but... I do remember Alton Brown from the Food Network um, has a, a hot cocoa mix that he makes and he adds cayenne pepper to it because that was a drink that they did um, like the Aztecs and the Incas and they put cayenne in there. And you know when I make my own ho hot cocoa I put cayenne in and it adds just a little extra zippity doo -dah and a little extra heat to it. I like it. Um, chamomile is number 10. The leaves and flowers are used as a tea to treat intestinal problems and nausea. Number 11 is choke cherry. Considered by Native American tribes as an all-purpose medicinal treatment, the berries are pitted, dried, and crushed into a tea or a poultice to treat a variety of ailments. These include coughs, colds, flu, nausea, inflammation, and diarrhea. As a salve or a poultice, it's used to treat burns and wounds. The pit of the choke cherry, much like apple seeds, are poisonous in high concentrations. So be sure to pit the cherries if you're considering this for any use. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to need to get into my oils, I think. Number 12, Echinacea also known as the purple cone flower, is a classic Native American medicine that's used to strengthen the immune system, fight infections, and fever. It's also used as an antiseptic and treat uh, general treatment for colds, cough, and flu. And I just happen to have some echinacea. <laughs> I'm going to have to tap into that stuff here as soon as I get done on the radidio. 
Number 13 is eucalyptus, one of my favorites. The oil from the leaves and the roots is a common treatment when infused in tea to treat coughs, sore throat, flu, and fever. And it's used to this day as an ingredient in cough drops. And I use it almost daily in my diffuser because I love the way it smells. Number 14 is fennel. It's a plant with a licorice flavor, and this is used in a tea or chewed to relieve coughs, sore throat, aid digestion, offer relief to diarrhea, and was a general treatment for colds. It also is used as a poultice for eye relief and headaches. And number 15 is feverfew, which is used to this day as a natural relief for fever and headaches, including severe fever or se yeah, severe headaches like migraines. It can also be used for digestive problems, asthma, and muscle and joint pains. Number 16 is fever wart. It's another fever remedy that also is used for general pain, itching, and joint stiffness. And it can be ingested as a tea or chewed or crushed as a paste as a salve. Uh, salve or as a poultice. Number 17 is ginger root, which, oh, another one that I absolutely love. It's another super plant in Native American medicine. The root is crushed and consumed with food or as a tea or a salve or poultice. Known to this day for its ability to aid digestive health, it's also anti inflammatory. Um, aids circulation and can relieve colds, coughs, and flu, in addition to bronchitis and joint pain. Number 18 is ginseng. Ah, oh, that's another good one. This is another contemporary herb that has a history that goes back across m cultures for millennia. The roots are used by Native Americans as a food additive, a tea, and a poultice to treat fatigue boost energy, enhance the immune system, and help with all of overall liver and lung function. The leaves and stems were also used, but the root has the most concentration of active ingredients. Number 19 is goldenrod. Commonly thought of today as a source of allergies and sneezing, it was actually considered another all-in-one medicine by the Native Americans. As a tea, in addition to food and topical salve, it's used to treat conditions from bronchitis and chest congestion to colds, flu, inflammation, sore throats, and as an antiseptic for cuts and abrasions. Number 20, honeysuckle. Oh, I remember honeysuckle from when I was a kid. Yeah, we... Okay, the neighbors didn't like us when the honeysuckle was in bloom. <laughs> The berries, stems, flowers, and leaves are all used to topically treat bee stings and skin infections. As a tea, it's used to treat colds, headaches, and sore throat. And it has anti-inflammatory properties as well. Number 21 is hops. It's not just for beer. As a tea, it's used to treat digestive problems and often mixed with other herbs or plants such as aloe, to soothe, soothe your muscles. And it's also used to soothe toothaches and sore throat. Number 22 is licorice. The roots and leaves can be used for coughs, colds, sore throats, and the root also can be chewed to relieve toothaches, which I'm thinking chew and toothache. Mmm, those two don't necessarily go too well together. Um, number 23 is mullion. And uh, it's used as an infusion in tea or added to a salad or other food. And this is a plant that has been used by Native Americans to treat inflammation, coughs and congestion, and general lung infections. It is quite common, and you probably have it growing in your yard or somewhere close. And I, there is a picture of it here, so you can recognize it. Number 24 is passion flower. The leaves and roots are used to make tea or treat anxiety and muscle pain. As a poultice for injuries to the skin such as burns, insect bites, and boils can also be made from passion flower. 
25 is red clover, and it grows everywhere. And the flowers, leaves, and roots are usually infused in a tea or used to top food. It's used to manage inflammation, improve circulation, and treat respiratory conditions. 26 is rose hips, and this is the red to orange berry that is the fruit of wild roses. It's really known to have a massive source of vitamin C, and when eaten whole, crushed into a tea, or added to food, it's used to treat colds and coughs, intestinal distress, and as an antiseptic and to treat inflammation. 27 is rosemary, which is a member of the pine family, and it's used in food or as a tea to treat muscle pain, improve circulation, and as a general cleanser for the metabolism, which rosemary is another one that gets diffused in my house quite a bit. Sage is number 28, and it's a far-reaching shrub across most, uh, much of North America. It's a natural insect repellent and can be used for a standard list of digestive ish, um, disorders, colds, and sore throat. Spearmint, which, ah, oh, I love spearmint, but man, when you plant it, you, you got to keep an eye on it because that stuff will take over. It's used consistently by Native American tribes for treatment of coughs, colds, respiratory distress, and as a cure for diarrhea and a stimulant for blood, cir blood circulation. Number 30 is valerian, and the root is used as an infusion in tea to relieve muscle aches, pain, and is said to have a calming effect. And finally, white pine, which I also have that oil is ubiquitous and the needles in the inner bark can be infused in a tea used as a standard treatment for respiratory distress and chest congestion. So there you have it. Now one thing that it surprises me is not in here is the dandelion because the lovely lowly dandelion has lots and lots of wonderful properties to it as well. which I wonder if maybe I ought to just, I'll do a quick search for dandelion real quick. Dandelion. Um, from Organic Facts. I'll put, let me share this original link real quick. Um, so the get it up so I don't forget because I have a tendency to do that from time to time forget what the heck I'm doing <laughs> or commonly known for me as brain farts okay um, so 13 benefits of dandelion um, it improves bone health because dandelions are rich in calcium, which is essential for the growth and strength of bones. And it's also rich in antioxidants like vitamin C and um, lutein, which protect bones from age-related damage. Uh, treats liver disorders. Um, while the antioxidants like vitamin C and lutein keep the liver functioning in optimal gear and protect it from aging, other compounds in the dandelion help to treat hemorrhaging in the liver, and dandelion aids in maintaining the proper flow of bile while also stimulating the liver and promoting digestion. It also helps with proper digestion and can reduce the chances of constipation and reduces the risk of serious gastrointestinal issues. It can be used to control diabetes. Dandelion juice can help diabetic patients by stimulating the production of insulin from the pancreas, thereby keeping the blood sugar level low. It can also help treat urinary disorders. Um, 
because they are highly diuretic in nature, so they help eliminate deposits of toxic substances in the kidneys and the urinary tract. Um, dandelion sap, also known as dandelion milk, is useful in treating skin disease, which are caused by microbial and fungal infections. The treatment stems from the fact that the sap is highly alkaline and has germicidal, insecticidal, and fungicidal properties. Now, you should be careful with it. Don't get it close to your eyes. But the sap can be used on itches, ringworm, eczema, and other skin conditions without the risk of side effects or hormonal disturbances commonly caused by pharmaceutical skin treatments. Um, it can be used to prevent acne because the juice is a good detoxifier, stimulant, antioxidant, and um, which makes it great for uh, acne treatment. It also is good for weight loss. Apparently our urine consists of up to 4% fat, so the more we urinate, the more water and fats are lost from the body. Dandelions, being diuretic in nature, promote urination and thereby help in losing the dreaded water weight without causing any side effects. Prevents cancer. Here we go. They are high in antioxidants such as vitamin C and lutein, lutein which reduce the free radicals, major cancer-causing agents in the body, thereby reducing risk of cancer. Vitamin C also detoxifies the body, which further helps to protect from the development of tumors and various cancers. Lutein poisons um, essential poisons essential components of cancer cells when it binds to them. Cool, rendering them ineffective and unable to reproduce. This characteristic has been demonstrated most notably with prostate cancer, although there are studies being done with others. It also treats jaundice. Um, let's see. It prevents gallbladder disorders, cures constipation, Ay. yeah, <laughs> prevents anemia, because it has relatively good levels of iron and vitamins and protein content. Um, let's see. Vitamin B and protein are essential for the formation of red blood cells and certain other components of the blood, and dandelion can help anemic people keep their condition in check. Cool. It regulates blood pressure. Once again, it's a pisser. But urination is the effective way of lowering blood pressure. So, yeah. Yay. Go pee. <laughs> In fact, most of the modern medicines for lowering blood pressure are based on this phenomenon. Dandelion juice being diuretic in nature increases urination both in quantity and frequency. Therefore, it helps to lower high blood pressure. Huh. I didn't know about it like that. Dandelions are also used as a vegetable and are a good source of fiber. It promotes digestion and in the past it was used to treat scurvy because of the high levels of vitamin C. And it also has healing effects on dyspepsia, infections in the stomach, intestines, and urinary system. Now there is a word of caution. Dandelions can be helpful in lowering blood pressure. But for patients already taking blood sugar modulators, this can result in hypoglycemia and equally dangerous. Oh, did I say blood pressure? It's blood sugar. Excuse me. Uh, so consult your doctor before adding dandelion supplements on top of your normal treatment. Also, the milk sap of dandelions has been known to cause itchiness, irritation, and allergic reactions on the skin and it should be kept away from the eyes. Finally, there is a rare type of fiber in dandelions called inulin, and some people have a predisposed sensitivity or allergy to it, which can be quite severe. So while adding dandelion greens to your diet in any way um, is smart, do so in small doses. 
So, that was pretty cool. And I can grow dandelions, let me tell ya. Um, yeah, Fudd, it can, can be made into kraut as well. And I think people, may, when they make dandelion wine, don't they use the flowers to make dandelion wine? Not real sure on that. Okay. Sharon, Sharon, Sharon. I do like dandelions. You know, that's always, even long time ago, I can remember, you know, thinking dandelions were just so dang cool, and I couldn't understand why, you know, why they were always, don't do that. And then, you know, I kind of bought into that whole, don't blow the seeds. Well, now it's like, I have dandelions. I'm going to blow some seeds. <laughs> Now, and I have a lot of dandelions in my yard, so I basically need to go out there and start popping the flowers off as soon as I see them so that um, I can do some of these wonderful things with dandelions. Okay, real quick here. I'm going to go over to the pig because, dang, I have jibber-jabbered and kind of gone off on a tangent um, over here on the pig. Uh, word of the day, teasers, progtards who threaten to leave America indefinitely if one of them, Bush 43 and the Donald, is elected POTUS, then refuse to honor their vow. I hate when that happens. Um, okay. They've got all kinds of other fun stuff going on here, but I don't think I have time to read it today. But this date in history, well, they got a boatload of them. Number one, this date in history. 62 years ago, my brother Mikey was born. Happy birthday, brother Mikey. Ask Mikey. He'll eat it. He'll eat anything. <laughs> okay. 22nd of December. 1882, Grinches near and far grind teeth in fury when Thomas Edison starts a tradition by creating the first string of Christmas tree lights. Good job, Thomas Edison. This date in history, the 22nd of December, 1937, the Big Apple's Lincoln Tunnel is finally open to traffic. Yay. This date in history, the 22nd of December, 1958. American culture hits a new low when the Chipmunk song hits number one. This outburst of musical terrorism continues to inflict itself on rational adults a half a century later. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. See, I can do that too. This date in history, the 22nd of December, 1964, one of the greatest airplanes in aviation history, Lockheed's incomparable SR-71 Blackbird takes flight for the first time, later writes itself into the record books, setting a new speed record for jets, 3,530 kilometers per hour. Damn. And finally, this date in history, the 22nd of December, 1980. President select Ronnie Reagan, Ronald Reagan, give the international rabble at the Black Helicopter Club a gift that keeps on giving. Names Gene Kirkpatrick, his UN ambassador. Uh, wow. Wow. Oh, well, that was this date in history, according to those wacky guys over here on PIGazette.com. Come on over and check it out. They got a whole bunch of Christmas stuff going on on their front page saying, you really need to come and check it. Hambo puts a piggish spin on Christmas. Adult beverages recommended. This is not a drill. I would take them for their word if I was you. Oh, well. 
Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 3, on this Freaker Friday before Christmas. What is Christmas? Mm, Christmas is very, very commercialized right now. But, you know, the story that we've, a lot of us grew up with is Christmas is supposed to be the celebration of the birth of the baby Jesus, which is a wonderful thing. Um, the uh, date itself is much in debate. Um, the actual birth of Christ, some say was the end of March, some say sometime in September. I don't know for sure, but there are documents, if you will, things that go way back to to Emperor Constantine where basically um, it was co-opted a pagan holiday was co-opted so that they could convert more people to Christianity whatever the case may be I personally think the reason for the season is to realize that it's not so much what you get but what you give and if you give your all and if you care about people and you put that out there people will acknowledge that there are some yes there are some out there that will take advantage but for the most part people appreciate it and don't be given you know don't be going out there doing things to get recognition I mean if that's your thing if you're still doing something nice for people just so you can get the pat on the back. Well, at least you're doing something nice for people. But please remember to enjoy every moment of every day because so many people are having their last. You know, so you never know when your last moment will come. So enjoy every moment for the gift that it is. It's called the present for a reason. Thank you all for listening in this evening and for putting up with some of the crazy stuff that I went to. Be sure to stick around because Grimmy and Musker will be on later on this evening for the Freakers Ball Edition, uh, Christmas Edition, I should say. And um, tomorrow morning, Flash a Rooney Dork, who he Skyped earlier, sent me a Skype message earlier that. Um, He would be willing to chit-chat this evening, but I got rather distracted. (laughs) Sorry, Flasher. I will be on tomorrow morning for me, noon um, Eastern time, with Flasher Rooney Dork for the Dork Table, giving you the Christmas edition of Dorks, which God only knows, it will be a gift that keeps on giving. We'll just leave it at that. How's that sound? Also, um, I'm sure JJ's will be around from time to time. Sunday at noon. Grimmy, you going to be playing the blues Sunday at noon? I hope on Christmas Eve. Grimmy and the blues and a rousing game of uh, trivia going on in the RLM chat. For those of you that are not traveling or don't have any company showing up for the holiday. Also, directly following Grimmy, I do believe Hal is going to be on with uh gonna take your ass you know because sometimes when you're naughty he's just not gonna be nice and so he's gonna open up a can of whoop ass and take you behind the woodshed and uh, you'll find out if you get a lump of coal or not march or april that comes from brother fudd thank you brother fudd on that birth of christ thing um also Sunday evening. Thank you once again for sharing that over on that effing site, Gariel. Gariel and Gigi's boo. And I will just read it, this little blurb that he put on there. Please be sure to join us for a very special Christmas show on the road less traveled with Gariel and Gigi's boo Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time at Real Liberty Media. We'll share several very unusual and inspiring Christmas stories from history which I'm sure you two will, and I'm sure Gigi's Boo will have a wonderful way of putting it out there for us. She's, I just love listening to her. Oy, just love listening to her. Some blues, some not. Ah, so, I'll have a blue Christmas. (laughs) 
Elvis has got no competition coming from me. Oh, well. <laughs> I am going to get out of here because I have had chili kind of sort of simmering on the stove this whole time because I got leftovers and I'm going to enjoy some chili. And uh, I want you all to know.